Hello, Yes But Why listeners. This is your host, Amy Jordan. Welcome to Yes But Why, episode 286, my chat with actor and producer, Aaliyah Leigh. But first, let's talk about our sponsors. Yes But Why podcast is sponsored by Audible. Sign up today for your 30-day free trial at audibletrial.com forward slash yes but why. You can get a free audiobook download as well as access to hundreds of books and podcasts, like tons and tons of stuff. Of course, Yes But Why podcast is on there, but you can get pretty much anything. If you hear about a new book coming out, it is immediately available on Audible. It's really great. Go now to audibletrial.com forward slash Yes But Why to sign up and get your account today. Yes But Why podcast is also brought to you by podcastcadet.com. PodcastCadet.com is the company that my husband Chris and I run to help podcasters. Whether you need help with editing your podcast or figuring out how to get the marketing done, we can help you. Mention code YBY20 and you'll get 20% off the first service or workshop you buy. Let us help you. PodcastCadet.com Yes, But Why podcast is also brought to you by True Hemp Science. True Hemp Science is my resource for vegan-friendly, whole plant extract CBD oil. Check out TrueHempScience.com to see all the CBD products available to you now. Use code YESBUTY7 to get 7% off your order of $50 or more. Plus, you'll get a free packet of CBD edibles with your order. TrueHempScience.com This week on Yes But Why, I chat with Aaliyah Leigh actor, producer, and podcaster based out of Los Angeles. In our conversation, Aaliyah shares the benefits she has found working with multiple acting coaches. She also tells me about her online improv troupe, Free Fall International, who she bonded with during the pandemic. Tune in for a really great talk. I now present to you Yes But Why, episode 286, Aaliyah Lay on finding a community who will believe in you. Enjoy. I'm Amy Jordan, and this is Yes But Why Podcast. Yeah. Creativity came out in some interesting ways, especially towards my sibling. I have a younger brother who's five years younger. Let's just say I found very interesting creative ways to torture him. So, uh, you know. <laughs> um, uh, but more seriously, like I would, you know, one of the things I did uh, was. On the weekends, my parents and my younger brother would always take a nap, right? And during those nap times, I don't know where I got this idea, but I just like pretended to, I never took naps. So I just pretended I took my little lunchbox, little like, you know, the metal lunchboxes at that time. And it, and we lived in an apartment in uh, San Francisco when I was like in elementary school, right? Uh, I don't know how old this was, maybe seven, eight, something like that. And so I would walk through the apartment, pretend to go to a bus stop with my little briefcase, then take the bus and pretend to go to an office. And I'd open up my, you know, briefcase lunchbox and I'd have like little pieces of paper and I would like design and draw all these different girls out of like the alphabet. Whoa. And then, yeah. So then I would, you know, and then, you know, the office day was over and then I'd like pack up and take my little briefcase and that was when everyone started waking up and I was done with my day at the office that's <laughs> one thing I did creatively. <laughs> I love that that's so fun I like that your family all took nap time and that they were like you're not gonna nap who cares good luck <laughs> to you hope it works out yeah. Uh, don't leave the house. All right. Uh, but the, yeah, your little, your, your, taking your your tiny briefcase to the office i played office quite a bit i i wonder where that came from i mean i feel like i feel like there were a lot of television shows about like people in offices maybe when we were growing up so it was like yeah, yeah that's what people do 
Yeah. yeah. I mean, I watched a lot of TV when I was like nonstop TV, actually. Like oh, yeah. if I, when, as soon as I got home, I <laughs> watched TV till I went to bed at night. I mean, I watched a ton of TV back then. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah, absolutely. And it inspires you to like, want to live that kind of life. You know what I mean? You're like, what's going on? Like, I remember, <laughs> I remember we, when we watched the Brady Bunch, we would go, I had one sister as well. And we would go and be like, why don't we have a bunch of other brothers and sisters? And they're like, what? No, no you don't have that many brothers and sisters. We're like, but why don't we? We want them. <laughs> they're like, no, you're not getting more. Sorry. Your parents are like, why? Why are you watching this? Why is this influencing you? Well, they're Let's like, go. why is it making you want more children in the house? Get out of here. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Oh, that's so funny. I love this little, uh, this little like, play acting that you're doing just for yourself. Like, nobody's even around for you to, you know, to witness what's going on, but you're just, like, creating this tiny little office. Like, that's yeah. so fun. Did you... Do you, do you recall uh, doing any other sort of play acting? Was that mostly the bulk of the way that you uh, were playing with friends? Hmm, that's a great question. Um, I was very physically active as a kid, you know, so I enjoyed playing all the sports. Um, not sports traditionally in terms of uh, little league or anything like that. We were we were immigrants and we didn't have a lot of money. We were very poor initially when we when I was very young. Um, but I went to a childcare or a daycare center at that time after after school, and so enjoyed playing things like four square or kickball or dodgeball or handball. I love tag, love tag. Um, I don't know that that's really creative, but I was physically active and uh, really enjoyed punching boys. You know, <laughs> yeah, yeah. They they would chase the girl, and back then they would in general chase the girls and want to kiss us on the cheek, and we would generally run away. And then when we were chasing the boys, it's basically to punch them, which was our version of kissing. So you know, yeah, yeah, logical, seems right. I think, yeah, yeah, makes sense. <laughs> I mean, I totally understand when I was like in second or third grade, we had, there was a lot of like crushes that were going on. Like I think about it now, like, cause I remember yeah. thinking at the time, like how serious it was that I had these crushes and yeah. now I'm like, what was I eight? Like, come on. Yeah. Like also, yeah. I don't know. So the reason why I asked you if like, that's how you played with your friends. And I love the games. I think the games are great. Also lends very uh, closely to the improv that we were talking about before. But, mm. um, but at the same time, like I, me and my friends would act out movies. So no, like there was a little so section, cool. I don't know of the woods or, I mean, I guess it was like the playground of my elementary school and it yeah. looked like a little stage and we would go up and like act out scenes from movies that we had seen. Right. Yeah. Like yeah. often, often dirty dancing. So it was just like us <laughs> dancing around you know, and someone being like, I'll take the watermelon, you know, <laughs> but, so <laughs> but we would do it where like two or three of us would be on stage and there would have yeah. to be someone watching, you know, so there was an audience. Of course. Yes. <laughs> yes. Um, yeah. No. We, you know, none of my friends and I ever did that. And I don't really know why, because I watch so much TV. Sure. But like I said, it was super poor back then. So I didn't even see a movie until I was like even older than that, I think. My first movie was like, I don't even know. Or or maybe it was, mm. I don't really remember that well. But yeah, what I can tell you that relates to acting or improv is that something happened in grade school. And it was, I was... I can't remember specifically, but it, it had something to do with an assembly. And I probably was speaking or asked to speak or do something. I don't remember. But I do remember my dad picking me up after school. And I was so excited because I, I, I said uh, it was an epiphany. It was like light shining down on me. I was like, Dad, I know what I'm going to be when I grow up. I'm going to be an actor. Like I knew it in my in my bones, my little baby child bones, you know, my little baby soul. 
but that didn't go so well. I was like, I, what did dad say? So I feel like the answer is going to be like, no, no, yeah. that's not well, what you're going to be. <laughs> okay. So I told oh, this, dad. To, yes, I told this to, um, somebody else I interviewed, uh, that, you know, and I'm sharing it now because I'm, I'm hoping this will be helpful, but, um, sure. like I said, we were immigrants, um, very poor initially. And they, my parents did an amazing job from being so poor, giving up their lives, starting all over with a language they didn't even know, you know, and now they can both thoroughly speak English fluently with an accent, uh, really like re built their lives from scratch. They're both very successful homes, blah, 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 blah. But like I said, we were poor. We were immigrants at that time. So my father, not realizing probably the culture, you know, in America, um, also probably trying to protect me. Um, and at the time I was a little girl, so it didn't feel like that. Uh, at the time, what I, he said, there is no way you can be an actor. Look at your face. <sighs> There's no Chinese people Asian people oh. on TV. Wow. Right? That's right. So crushed. Oh. I was crushed. Yeah. So anyway. Man, that's a rough one. That happens yeah. to so many people, though, because for various reasons, parents are like, no, you cannot do this. But that is probably the saddest reason of like, no, you can't do this because it's just not, you're, you're not on TV. Like that's, uh, that's, that's so hard. I really, I honestly thought he was just being like, you can't be on TV. You're not attractive enough. And I was like, oh my God. And then it was way worse. So <laughs> I'm, I'm so sorry. That's so rough because it, I mean, poor guy. He probably, he probably wasn't wrong. You know what I mean? There was not a lot in the way of like Asian actors on TV in the, not you know, in time. the eighties, you know, like, no, not at all. And, not and they're lot. certainly not, um, you know, the characters that are exactly the most exalted, you know what I mean? I remember I growing mean. up, like that was a, that was a big thing when I was growing up. I was like, why is this all right? This guy, what? What's going on? Because a lot of 80s movies, there was like lampooning of Asian characters. And you'd be like, all right, I don't know about that. That doesn't seem yeah. right. It's like we were talking about earlier where it was like, it, I get that in comedy, some character has to like be beaten down. But like, why does it always have to be this guy? Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Like, mm -mm, yeah. no. Yeah. Man, yeah. what a rough, like, what a rough life lesson dad's trying to lay down in that moment. I'm sorry that it crushed yeah. you, but I see that you've okay. made it through. So yeah. that, it must have worked itself yeah. out in your, in your brain. Hopefully. Well, eventually it did. I mean, I mean, for a long time, I, you know, blamed him. I resented him. I thought it was his fault and all this stuff because I never ever tried to be an actor until after I graduated from college, mm. <laughs> you know? Um, so, but, but I don't want to vilify him. He was doing the best he could. It wasn't because he didn't think it was, it, he was just trying to protect me. I think is really what it was. He was trying to protect me, you know? Um, so, and now I'm an adult. So it's, I had to go through it for whatever reason. And I did. Um, and I'm actually now grateful for the experience because, because it kind of ties into today's, today's um, ideas and views right now that we can have many different uh, people on screen uh, portraying many different characters, not just a stereotype. Um, you know, and that, uh, and now, you know, we can continue to inspire and see everyone in different aspects uh, as humans, and that hopefully that will help create more awareness of how we are all humans. Yeah. You know? 
Also, so, yeah. the fact that now your you and your face is on TV, and there are lots of Asian faces on TV, it will sort of like you know rectify the the bad world that your dad was seeing. I mean, he wasn't wrong. You know what I mean? Like there was this this terrible like lack of Asian faces in movies and television at that time, and so you know he's like, that's just I don't see it. So I don't want you to get your hopes up because they don't, that's not what they're putting on TV. And now, man, like the flip of that, the like the amazing different, like uh, hopefully more and more and more, um, you know, representation um, mm-hmm. will show people, you know, it's like what they say, when you see the faces on screen that you recognize, you're like, oh, I feel like this is my story. And that's. And that's why every face is, is going to be in movies and TV so that every one of us, all of the shades of the rainbow in the U.S. and beyond, but, you know, the U.S. being a diverse place, everyone can feel like, oh, yeah, this this character's just like me or, oh, I'm just like that gal or, oh, man, that judge. I'm like, I'm just like that judge or yeah. whatever character in whatever show that you're watching, you know, like, yeah. thankfully, you're right. The way that there's there it is changing now, you know, maybe maybe dads don't have to be so worried about their actor actor well, daughters <laughs> maybe maybe but maybe. Then the whole but then now now there's the whole you know it's an acting career versus like an office career or you know something yeah. but you know there's always going to be challenges no matter what you know sure sure yeah yeah, yeah. and parents always worried Parents always yeah. holding people back. You know what, though? I realize now that I'm older that the reason why parents hold back their children is just their own fear. Yes. You know, yes. life is hard and it beats you down and you either flourish from it and, you know, emerge like a phoenix or, you know, you just get squished and squished and squished and squished until you're just sort of a squish and then you can't see the light because you're not a phoenix there's no oh look at uh, this wonderful revel you know some people just don't can't get out of the the putting it against them it's like we were talking about earlier like being in acting being an actor being a creative life there's always people beating you down whether it's people saying hey you can't do it because it doesn't happen or people saying no you're not right for the role no we're not going to put you in there no we don't like the way you look thousands of rejections that are happened that happen every day but how do you get past it how do you rise yourself uh raise yourself above it you know and keep moving Right. Mm-hmm. So, so you found a way to, to finally get involved. You said after college, what was the thing that inspired you to get back in? Uh, <laughs> that's so funny. Well, I wanted to say, I wanted to do it in high school. I yeah. wanted to do drama in high school, sure. but I was too scared. Right. I was yeah. too scared and I didn't do it. But so what happened is after I graduated from college, uh, my fiance and I broke up and I had all this free time in the evenings. I was like, I better do something. And the community college uh, in the city I was living in at that time, ha- you know, had drama classes. And uh, this is actually kind of funny. So I signed up for a drama class, right? I'm like, okay, I'm finally gonna take this drama class. I'm finally gonna do it. And uh, I remember actually the first night going to the class and it was like, you had to walk across the quad of this community college, right? And I start walking, I'm halfway through the quad. I'm like, and I'm like scared and I've been scared, right? And I turn around and start walking back to my car. I'm like, I'm not gonna do it. And then I'm like halfway to my car. So now I'm a quarter of a way, right? And then I'm like, no, no, damn it, I'm going to do it. So I finally turned around and I actually went to the class. But that's how it started. There was a lot of walking back and forth. Like, oh, doing... you should have seen me. If anybody was watching, they'd be like, where is that girl going? <laughs> she's lost. She doesn't know where she's going. I Dude, can only hope everything. that there's somebody <laughs> who saw you. Like, and like that this, 
this moment like inspired something in them. Like they wrote a novel about a person who couldn't make a decision because they were so inspired. They were like, what's happening with this girl? Oh, she wants to go on? over there. No, she's not going to go. She's going she back can't. To, Why oh, can't she go? Where's she going? Her lover's there. <laughs> wait, no, but then her other lover's here. No, wait, but which lover does she need to go to first? Or most of all? <laughs> or who's so good far. for her? Not what's best for her. Or, or, or who's best for her? Not just who she loves. Back and forth, back and forth. <laughs> <laughs> We just created a rom com right there. Oh my gosh. Well, you know, but but realistically, it just sort of like further like deepens the idea that we were talking about. A, like even earlier in our conversation before we started recording, where it was like we're just inspired by stories and like every tiny detail that we keep coming up with will inspire us to like create yeah. all these major ideas. Like we've been doing it since. 13 seconds into our phone conversation. We have. We were like creating the whole <laughs> art gallery of the yeah. pandemic. Oh, yeah. Yeah. All the things, you know, but like yeah. you going back and forth, it's a great story. And it, now we're like 12 different people in the building were watching you and they were all inspired to do different things. Like, I love it, you know? Oh, my God. I love that idea. What if there were 12 <laughs> people who watched and then it all inspired them to do something slightly different but all yeah. based on the complete indecision of going back and forth multiple mm -hmm. times mm -hmm. you know what though realistically have you ever like that's happened to me where like i was held back personally but then especially like in this context or like as a teacher uh to acting students for myself when i yeah. teach somebody how to get through their own hurdle all of a sudden i'm like oh I've just figured out how to get through my own hurdle. Like, yeah, you know what I mean? Like you just, it, sometimes you have to try to help somebody else in order for it to find its way back around to help you. And you're like, Oh, wait a minute. Right. Like yeah. I bet you if in, in your indecision walk where you're back and forth, back and forth, if somebody <laughs> stopped you and was like, excuse me, do you know where the acting class is? Because I want to go, but I don't know where it is. And I'm really nervous. You would have been like, yeah, let me get you over there. Let's walk together. Right. Because yeah. you immediately forget about yourself and you're like, this poor girl needs to go to the acting class. She wants to go. I know where it is. I yeah. would be remiss if I didn't bring her. Right. Yeah. And then yeah. you immediately forget your own thing. But that's why also why to bring it back, why watching other people's stories is what like how we process our own lives. Right. Is because we watch somebody else's story and then we're like, oh, my God. Like, if you ever watch something that's like really like I watch a movie about like a mobster and I'm all like, I just figured out how to run my life that because I've watched this now I'm like what what am I learning I learned how to be a badass <laughs> I know but it's true though like I do that like I'll watch these things and I'll be like you know this is an yeah. interesting way of negotiating I'll, uh, I'll yeah. consider that the next time I'm trying to get a new contract <laughs> like what what am I going to do really I'm going to use the mob techniques yeah, but in the moment like, I am so yes. inspired right yes, oh. yes you're like that Toyota Prius I'd like $3,000 <laughs> off the sticker price <laughs> <laughs> the best don't come is. back to me till, you, till I hear what I want to hear yeah, you go check with your boss. <laughs> yeah, you should check with the manager. <laughs> Bring him to me. I don't want to talk to anybody that's not the manager. <laughs> you know what's the best part is that as soon as you brought up Toyota Prius, I forgot the idea that we were actual humans who might buy a car and was immediately like, oh, yeah, like when you're acting in a Toyota Prius commercial and you're like, I'm going to channel Tony Soprano into... The way that I hacked this scene about the Toyota Prius. <laughs> Listen. <laughs> oh, my God. It all comes together. It's all just an acting exercise. <laughs> yeah. So you took this acting class. Was this the now 
one of the things that you and I had chatted about, like on when we were emailing, was that you uh, you love taking acting classes, like that mm -hmm. that you know not just a to enrich your acting career and like make yourself a better actor yay awesome but also because they're like fun and interesting and you like get to meet cool new teachers and new students and like you know get involved in like what we're talking about where it's like you get to watch how one person solves their own problem and like that inspires you to do your own thing so like how what was your favorite during the course of your life um big question what which or one or many uh acting classes for you do you feel like were the most formative for you um that's a that's a good question that's really hard i i have to say that i've taken a lot of different acting classes with different acting coaches and i i have to say that every single one of them i have learned something from Awesome. You know, yeah, yeah. Everyone uh, has something of their own unique uh, teaching or perspective that that they've shared that that has resonated with me in one way or another. Yeah. Um, if, yeah. If somebody was to ask me, like, who I would recommend, it also depends on who you are at the time. Mm. Um Right. So like, yeah. I love Richard side, uh, S E Y D. He has, he teaches in LA as well as he, sometimes he teaches in San Francisco, like once a week or something like that. Um, theater director, actor. Um, but he's really great. If you're, uh, uh, not, if you're, kind of more well he's great if you're already an experienced actor but he's great also if you're not confident in your acting abilities yet he's really great for that as well um so i love him and um especially and recently right now i love joe kelly that's j-o-k-e-l-l-y i love her approach I, I love her philosophy and I'm currently taking her, 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 uh, courses now still, like I took one a while ago and then I did another and then took a little break and, and now I'm in a different one. I love her and her philosophy and everything, um, about that. So those are the main two that stand out right now. Uh, Joe, because of her ideas of, her philosophy not just of acting but as us as humans and as people mm -hmm. so i really love and both of those but like i said every single acting teacher i've had i have learned something from they've all been great in their own ways um comedy i love scott sedita he's great or tony tony rago he's uh in the studio of scott sedita studios fabulous uh comedy uh I only took their comedy classes, but really great at breaking down like specifically sitcoms, that kind of thing. So if you're looking for comedy, um, and they also teach drama, but I haven't taken drama classes from them. So I can't speak of that. <laughs> yeah. So I like the way that you've differentiated, um, your, the acting experiences based on like the time of life, because I think that that's really important. And, uh, also, you know, really good to consider um the other thing that you mentioned was that you said that you're still taking classes with joe kelly and i want the listener to know that still is because the reason why still is because um alia works all the time so like technically a person could stop taking acting classes if they wanted once they start really booking gigs and like doing the work if that's what they wanted you know what you're doing you've developed your own idea of craft like you can figure out you know you've done enough roles you know how to get the information out you know how to memorize your lines you know how to interact with other actors you kind of get it but I like this idea that 
number one, you as an artist are ever evolving and you're like working on yourself always. That's like amazing. Um, but also that there is this teacher that is constantly sort of filling that cup for you. That is like helping you not only to continuously make your craft usable and like, oh, I can keep doing this and I can keep trying this and makes it fresh and exciting for you. But that she also has part of it that's sort of like, you know, for, for your human side as well to kind of mm -hmm. like, Hey, I know you're an actor, but you're also a real person. So let's talk about that. And that's really, that's really great and very yeah. necessary when you live in a lot of fake worlds. <laughs> oh, yeah. yeah. And she actually has a course specifically for non-actors as well. It's called the 21 day emotional reset that Ooh. she did, that she created during the pandemic. And that's for non-actors, uh, but it is still kind of weird. So as a non-actor, you have to go in with an open mind because there's some weird exercises nothing dangerous but they're aware they're not like yeah. they're not like things you would i guess ex you know i don't know it's just different yeah but it's good it's yeah. all right I, it's funny how you're like describing it i'm like yeah the audience for this whether they're actors or not they're kooky kooky crowd oh, we're all right with it yeah i mean perfect. i mean let's be clear like the people who are going to be uh interested in a workshop for non-actors about an emotional reset they're all right they're ready they're I, they've they've uh done a few uh you know wild tests of themselves to try to figure out what's going on i have a lot of friends like that where they're like you know they really just push the limits they go to like ashrams or like you know one Ooh. of the guys like he he does uh, he lights himself on fire you know what i mean like in a pro in a professional Whoa. way in a professional yes, way yes. <laughs> <laughs> but that but it always feels like but for him it's always like a, a formative situation like it is just a uh you know a bit but yeah. um um for events but at the same time like when he finishes it's like it's like acting like he gets off yeah. the stage of it and he's all like ah, ah filled <laughs> my soul you know and it's like hey why not let's do it so nice. there are plenty of non-actor humans in this world where uh, a kooky wild uh workshop is exactly what they're looking for excellent um, yeah. yeah plus i'm like yeah. 21 day emotional reset does, is there, can I have 21 days where I can just be quiet and alone? That sounds great. Is that, yeah, so. <laughs> there, there, there isn't that. It's not 21 <laughs> days where you can be quiet and alone. Although I did hear another friend of mine told me about this, uh, this uh, meditation. I think it's called Visana, Visanova, something like that. It's even free, but it's like 10 days of intense meditation you can actually go to the center for free and uh, and they'll feed you and you don't even have to pay for the meditation unless you want to for the whole 10 days and they'll give you a room and it's like a 10 hour meditation for 10 days. Wow. So if you're interested, Amy, mm -hmm. <laughs> she swears by it. She's like, where is she's it like, in California? I don't know where it is. She just told me about it like yesterday. That's and I was so like, funny. oh, look into it. I like because how I just she's like, get yeah. in there. You're like, all right. <laughs> but she loves it. She loves it. She swears by it. And she's like, I'm telling everyone about it. And and she's not and she's not like brainwashed or anything like that. You know, it's all right. It's all right. You know, she just if, loves it. if your brainwashing is about like, you know, meditating and uh, having uh, an even keel in your life, I feel like you're all right. Like, that's yeah. fine. That there but are much worse things to be obsessed with than uh, yeah. than trying to meditate and be one for ten hours. Yeah, yes. I think yes. you're fine. You know, also like yeah. giving free food to people and shelter, not terrible, not no. the worst thing in the world. Sounds no. lovely. Yes, right? sounds yeah. wonderful. Yeah. yeah, if it's located in California, let me know. I'm coming there immediately. I um, will, you know, I'll look, <laughs> I'll look it up and find out because she just gave me the links yesterday, and but That's I haven't. So funny. I haven't looked deeper into it, uh, but I you. did just start transcendental meditation too. So I'm oh. like, I don't know that I want to do this other meditation because I just started TM. So. Yeah, that's the big one. That's the one that says really that the, all the all the celebs really like. 
Yeah. My, a friend of mine got, he, a friend of mine that I met a million years ago through copywriting, I interviewed him for my show because um, second season, he was my inaugural show first season. I'm like, hey, let's have you be the first show for my second season, right? And he's a, a writer and producing shows and uh, he's a mentor. I mean, he's just a great guy. Anyway, so we were chatting, and so he's like, yeah, I've been doing TM, because he something happened, and I was like, wow, that's so cool, and he's like, yeah, I've been doing TM for the past five years, and I was like, what? And he, and he said, it's been really helpful during the pandemic. Mm. Uh, so I'm like, okay, I've heard of it. I didn't really know anything about it, but tell me more. Maybe I should try it, because I've heard of it, and I've thought about it, and so now I did. I'm glad you got a connection. I hear you got to have one. No, you don't. No, you don't oh, either. I heard you had to know a guy to get into uh, to get into transcendental meditation. No, really? Oh, is it for everybody? Oh, okay, it's for everybody. You just um, you go to their website if you're curious. You go to their website. Um, they have a teacher for you in pretty much every area that you're in. Hmm. So, uh, and it, and and it's a sl- it costs money, but it's a sliding scale. So they have scholarships, which are free. Huh. You know, and 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 if you're a student, I think it's free. And then it's um, a sliding scale in the terms of the tuition for the meditation. But the first three or four meetings where you're learning about it and what it is, no cost. If you decide to actually take it and become and and take the course, then you have to pay mm. if you fit in. But yeah, That's you don't need. You don't need to know anyone. Oh. Like I didn't mention him or anything till after, uh, but but now you know me. So but yeah, you there you go. Me. I got it. I got an in. Now I'm in. Now I'm in. I, I'm, I'm gonna be meditating gonna so hip. It's gonna be amazing. Um, I'm into it. And uh, but no, you don't. You don't need to know anybody. I don't know. Right. I'm just my friend. So oh, I just yeah. mis- I I clearly misunderstood. Interesting. Interesting. Um, so I wanted to ask you with reference to, so we talked about your first acting class, but like you're very well established at this point. Like you have done a lot of acting on, you know, television, movies, you're, you're involved in the business enough that, you know, you know how to, how, you, you have various agents and whatnot. How do we get from, I decided to take a uh, very reluctant acting class to, you know, this point, like, how did it evolve for you? Right. Um, That's another really great question. You asked really great questions, Amy. (laughs) (laughs) Um, I don't even remember how it evolved. And thank you for saying that, because I am still continuing to work Uh, not only on my craft, but on my own personal achievements, right? So like, uh, I'm working towards, you know, getting better roles or bigger roles or, or roles that are more impactful. So more people can see, right? Uh, Like you said earlier about the stories that they can really impact us in a way that could be really positive, right? Anyway, so I'm still working on it. Um, So I've been acting for over 20 years when I first started, you know, or so. I, I think it's been about 20 years or so. Um, and so like, when I first started, I had no idea what I was doing, um, other than taking the class and enjoying it and loving it and deciding this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to do this. But I was in the acting closet for like, 13 years, like, I would be in plays, but not tell anyone except for my boyfriend you know my new boyfriend you know (laughs) like like I wouldn't really share any of that information while I had a regular quote nine to five job right yeah um so uh what I can I I don't even really know how but I think just talking to other actors in class asking teachers and I feel like right now if you're new into acting we are so lucky because we have like your podcast here Amy where people can learn right and and sort of not have to struggle as much in terms of their steps they can Mm -hmm. kind of like someone else who's already had that experience can share definitely take acting courses uh 
definitely um, be aware that agents, legitimate agents, never, never charge you any money ever. You know, um, uh, they may ask you to get new headshots. They may give you a few referrals to those photographers, but you are not required to use any of those photographers. If you feel you have to, that might be a little bit of a red flag. Anyway. Totally. Good tip. Right? No, it is. It's important. Yeah. Yeah. And, and the craft it's, it's, a, so, um, I've taken lots of acting classes, like I've said, continuing to work on my instrument, my craft myself. It, so I think it's like a threefold thing. You have to learn the business of acting, right? And that is a business aspect. And you can learn that from, uh, different courses that are out there that are reputable. Uh, I believe uh, there's a few out there that I know of that are reputable. There's Brian Pataka. He does acting coaching on the business as well as individual coaching. Um, there's Adre Coleman. She does business coaching, um, also an actor. There's Jonah Zhao, uh, X-I-A-O, also teaches. These are all reputable people. Um, Valerie Hubbard from Actors Fast Track. Again, a different uh, perspective on your business of acting and how you really are your own business and your own entrepreneur as well. So, so, the, so there's three things like, uh, right? Uh, Jonah says there's three things. If you get all these three things, there is no reason, no way you would not be successful as an actor. Business, get that down. Craft, have to have that down. And mindset, you have to have that down, mm. right? So it's when you have all three of those, you there you have to be successful. You will be successful. There is no way not to be. Yeah, I think probably the business part is the hardest part, like figuring out how to navigate it. Figuring out like like the excellent tip you just gave about how agents should not be asking you for money. Yeah, the reason why you give that tip is because that happens to tons of people. So yes, these are good tips to give to people. And that you're right, the business is like such an important part of being able to be an actor. Like not only what you're, uh, what it sounded like one of the gals was mentioning the idea of like taking care of yourself, understanding that you're sort of like an independent contractor to yourself, like creating yourself like an LLC. What was it? I read something about how Dane Cook made himself an LLC. And like, that was the way that he like really made good money because he legally established his like public persona from his personal. Per and it was like, Oh wow. It was like this big, I remember when I heard that I was like, Oh my goodness, that's amazing. You know what I mean? And like when my husband and I got married, we LLC'd all of our entertainment stuff, everything that we do that is entertainment related. We made them individual businesses. We made one LLC and DBA'd yes. all the different things so that yeah. that way we have records of all the, because you know, when you do this work, it's also a bunch of freelance gigs. So half is knowing the business of what your industry like so you're in california so there's a california film industry world and you have to know that but if you live in idaho find out what the idaho film industry is or what whatever you know oh there's three ladies and they're the ones that do all the casting for the commercials that are shot here or whatever mm -hmm. find mm -hmm. out who in your area you know it's not about because a lot of people are like oh i need to understand show business in general no you don't have to understand how television networks work if you don't live in Hollywood. If that's not what you're headed towards, you right. don't have to know how that works. Don't right. worry about it. They're fine. Right. If you want to move there and get involved in it, yeah, you do. You need to find that out. There are people that go to grad school just to figure out how to be like an AD on a television show because there's so much to learn. But if yeah. you don't live there, you don't have to learn that. You just have to learn your place business. However, yes. the LLC and DBAing, the having your own autonomy as a business, that's everywhere. Every state, no matter what kind of industry it is, no matter what, whether there's one commercial agent in town or there's 50, 
being your own individual business, that protects you from, Mm -hmm. you know, any trouble and also sets you up for easier taxes. Let's be clear. I was just talking to my CPA and it's like, and that's a crazy thing to even think of. Like what an adult, stupid, dumb thing I have to think about taxes, but you know, Every gig I do is just another freelance gig that pops up there. When I get paid X amount of money to be acting in this thing, they're not taking taxes out. So I still have to mention it to Uncle Sam. Hey, this guy paid me X amount of money for him to take a bunch of photos of me. And now yeah. I'm selling uh, diabetes medication, you know, and, and that's great. But it's you have to log it. You know, like you have to do the business part. That's Mm -hmm. the part. Now, I did also want to ask you about mindset, but business is just like so, so intense. How did you get there? Like, did you take a number of, you mentioned some great teachers. Did you take these business classes to like really figure out how to do it? Was it about like your friends and acting classes that gave you tips? How did you get to a good place? Well, I'm still working on it too, right? So, um, so, uh, but, but I think the main thing is if I can do what I've done so far, anyone can. And then as I continue to grow, anyone else can do it too. So it's not like I'm special in that way. It's like I'm not. It's like anything I can do, you can do, whoever's listening, you know. Um, but, uh, to your question, like, um, I don't even know how I just started hearing and seeing things and I was starting to research like, okay, what is my next step? So, so, so in the beginning, in the beginning, acting classes craft, right? And then sometimes we think most people, actors think, okay, I need an agent so I can get auditions so I can, you know, book acting work, or I need to, um, do auditions so I can do theater work, right? Um, maybe, I don't know the New York market, but maybe you need an agent to to be able to audition for New York theater. I don't know. I don't know how that works. There's a but lot anyway. of different levels of New York theater. So yeah, probably I'm sure at one point at, at, yeah. at certain levels, you want to be in a Broadway show, you can't just swing up and be like, hi, <laughs> I'm amazing. <laughs> can I be right. in your show? And they're like, right. no, no, yeah. you cannot. Are you famous already? Then no, no, you can. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, uh, pardon, pardon my cynicism about Broadway. Ooh. <laughs> but yeah, but like, I, I think it, it was that, that, uh, that I wish I could give you a better answer, Amy. Uh, <laughs> I just, I think it's, it's just okay. I have no idea how I figured out half the things I know right now. Like, don't right? worry. I mean, I'm definitely putting you on the spot of like, what was the moment that you understood show business? <laughs> it's fine. You don't have yeah. to like remember. Um, but you just mentioned these three great, um, uh, these three great uh, bullet points of acting. And I wondered for you, you know, you clearly learned them from a person. Was mm-hmm. there, um, was there a class that you took that like gave you the groundwork on how to set yourself up as a business? Um, yeah, yeah. There's all of the, all of, all the ones I've mentioned will share something about the aspect of the business. So all of the people I mentioned, they are often having free webinars where they're sharing information, but also promoting a course that they are selling. Mm-hmm. Uh, but you can get lots of great information from their free webinars. And then you can decide from all of them who, who, will, who has what you need to learn. Right. So I think for me, what it was is that I was just looking, right? Like I'm looking like, like, okay, I know my next goal. What can I do? Or, or what, what, what is the next step? How can I be or do a little better? What can I improve? What am I missing that I don't know that I need to learn and then implement to do? And so it's that kind of idea and searching and looking that I start taking these different courses and I learn something from the different courses. Hmm. Um, I hope that answered your question. Totally. And I think it really opens up the idea um, to talk about the fact that it's not just 
one teacher and one place where you have gone in and you're like, they have taught me everything I know. Instead, it's like you've taken so many different classes and then piecemealed from what they've told you to build what works for you, right? That is perfect. You know what I mean? That's exactly what people need to hear because they, uh, a lot of people think that, you know, there's a one-stop shop that you're just going to swing in and it's like, oh, you've met this. Yeah, you're going to walk in, take two classes, and then they're going to be like, uh, would you like to be the uh, wacky neighbor on this sitcom? We have a role available. That's not how it works, right? But I appreciate the the truth of learning bit by bit of like, I'm not sure exactly when I got this knowledge, but I know that I put this puzzle together and somewhere it's in there. Like that's, it's important, I think, for people to recognize and to realize that it's not just a one class, okay, now I figured it out situation. No, it's like a journey and it's lots of different bits. And the other Mm -hmm. thing that you just said, which I think is really interesting, is the idea that like, your you have to analyze yourself after each new experience like after you do a few more auditions you're like okay how how did i do better in those auditions that i did before how did i do worse what does it seem to need from me what are they um you know looking for in my auditions that i i'm you know hmm, i didn't get these why didn't i get them okay maybe i could try learning this other thing right if you're not constantly working and making yourself a better performer and a better um actor well you know then you're not going to be able to rise to the top in an acting pool or in an audition pool where they're like, Hey, that girl's got something going on because they can see the effort, the effort that you put in and all the detail. What do you Yeah. Yeah. I I love how you say that, Amy. I mean, that, that is really cool. And, and, and to be fair too, also, um, that's just my own personal experience and that's just how I've done it. I mean, there, there are, there, I mean, There are people who I think have only gone to maybe two or three people, right? Or maybe just two and they've gotten it. And I think that that's totally valid as well. Uh, But that's, but my, I'm just sharing my own personal um, experiences as to what is working and what isn't um, and how, how I'm working on growing and how I'm still, still working on growing. And, and as I'm growing, Everything I say now, I might in a year or two go, oh, you know what? Yeah, no, I found an even better way, <laughs> you know, <laughs> like I, I, you know, you know, but I don't know that until I get there. Right. So yeah. when I get there, I'll be like, no, this is still the same or, you know, it's similar and better. Or I might be like, get there and be like, oh, well, that stuff was cool. But now this is just like a couple of things like, oh, I could have done it even faster or, or, or it's smoother at, but I think it's, 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 it's what you said, Amy, in terms of a journey, it's, which makes it hard for actors or creatives is that it isn't, it isn't like, I feel like in general, if you're going to be a doctor, you know, you have to go to college, you know, you have to take medical school, you know, you need to pass this and then you can be a doctor, right? Like, you know, the steps, right? However, those steps are, you know what those steps are. Or if you're a lawyer, you know, you need to go to college, you know, you need to pass a bar, you know, you need to go to the law school or vice versa. And then, you know, you need to do this and you know, you need to do that. Then you, you need, you need to be whatever at a law firm. And then you get to be a partner and blah, blah, blah. Right. Like, you know, these steps, it feels like very similar, right? Whereas for creatives, I feel, and as an actor, I feel like, I feel like there isn't, (laughs) there isn't a A, B, C, D step. There's a, there's steps, but we don't know what those steps, nobody can see me, but I'm waving my arms around like a crazy snake (laughs) chicken person to show that we don't know where our steps are, you know, like, um, 
but hearing other people's steps can help us with our steps and maybe help us jump some steps and everyone's journeys and steps are actually going to be very individual and different. Yeah. You make a strong point. And uh, one thing that I think is really interesting about the doctor to actor comparison is that, you know, in within being within the medical field, they've streamlined the path, right? They have a series of hurdles that you have to get through. Um, it's an excessive amount of school. But, you know, if you threw actors in 12 years of school, they'd probably come out pretty good. Um, you know, uh, right? <laughs> <laughs> like imagine being like a res you're like a resident actor, you know, like Aww. you really get that. They pretend that that's a real option, but it's not like it, like being a re the resident actor in a company in like a small town like Lord Theater it's a such a different pathway it's not like you just get out of school in fact going to acting school then when you come out I suppose it's probably the same for at for doctors as well they're all like oh yeah how was school yeah was that good yeah did you have a good time cool get in the emergency room and deal with real life it's happening right but there's there's a path but you know at the end of the day, they still have to prove themselves in uh, over and over yeah. and over and over and over in the same way that actors do. It's just that yeah. there's no one streamlined plan, right? It's not right. like every every medical school in the country uh, has agreed, hey, guys, we're going to do it this way. These are going to be the rules. This is what the test is going to look like, right? But there's no right. acting test. There's no, like, acting, you know... Olympics that you like can go through and you're like, well, you you got over that hurdle and you figured out right. how to do this. Now you're ready. Right. You can do 12 right. Right. accents. Right. You're, you can win, you know? Right. right. Yeah. You know, there are some countries that do that kind of thing where they like really groom the actors and the performers. And then like, that's wow. where the pool is. Right. Yeah, maybe that'd be good. There is something beautiful to the um, openness of anybody can be an actor that even you mentioned earlier. But wouldn't it be nice if there was some direct path, some way yes. that we were yes. to know, right? Wouldn't and that you're be right. Nice? That's why lovely. I'm doing this. That is why <laughs> I'm definitely why I'm doing this podcast so that people are like, because it's for everywhere in the world, right? And my thought for this, the beauty of the internet, and especially during the pandemic, was that we were able to talk to people all over the world, right? And learn what it was like for them to do theater and to do different things and how it works there and, and what classes you could take there and da 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 Say you're in Omaha and Omaha doesn't have what you're looking for. Well, check it out. Look it up. Find other places. Maybe there's a city somewhere in the earth that has what you're looking for. And since we happen to be luckily living in this time of great technology, where you can both look it up on the internet and find out that they have the school you've always wanted to go to, and then buy a plane ticket to that place. These yes. are amazing technologies that we have at our fingertips, and we can go yeah. do that. And that's the other reason yeah. why... I, uh, even during uh, a little bit before the pandemic, but definitely during the pandemic, I opened up my interviews to international because it was like, who's to say, who's to Absolutely. say that somebody listening to this in anywhere, USA or Canada or India or anywhere that people listen to won't be like, what I really want to do is this specific thing. And they find out that they've got that theater in Nashville, Tennessee, and they're like, I'm moving from Germany to Nashville because that's what I want to do with my life. And you can. And yeah. you can. And you can. And that's amazing, right? Yes. Yes. I love that. I mean, that's it, one of our lucky things about yes. this time for sure. Yes. You know Please. what? So let's talk about that. You have made some international connections yourself. Tell me about your um, beautiful um, reinvention of pandemic time. You have been doing your own um, improv with international friends. How has that come to be? Um, that was so fun. And that is still so fun. Uh, 
it was an idea I had. It just it just popped in my head this idea. I was really looking to create um, an improv group specifically with these actors that 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 have a similar um, uh, a philosophy, right? So that we could connect easier, right? An easier communication when we have the same language that we're speaking artistically and creatively. Um, so I was looking in that group and uh, asked people if they were interested in forming this improv idea group that I had, but I had no idea what it was going to look like. I just knew that I wanted to look and find something where it was improvisational, but also um, also uh, 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 acting, like not like um, emotionally acting, connecting, right? Uh, I love improv of all kinds. I love musical, imp- I can't do it, but I love it, right? I love <laughs> watching all these different kinds of amazing improvisers who are phenomenal and, 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 and I just love improv so much. All of it, short form, long form, all of it. But what I've noticed in a lot of improv, uh, not all, but many improvs that I've seen or personally been doing is that uh, we were missing the the emotional connection, you know, the acting part, because anyone can do improv, but not everyone can act yet. Everyone's capable of acting, but depending on where you are, you might not be an actor yet. Um, and, and, and it's the same for acting. Like people can be actors, but not necessarily know how to do improv yet. But, but of course they can learn as well. Right. So, so I was looking to create something where we could have that emotional connection with the improvisation. And I wasn't sure how that's going to look and it's still in progress, but we are starting to have shows now. And uh, this group that we formed happens to be international. Uh, We have, our current uh, participating members, one's in Australia, she's on break, uh, and one is Botswana and she's on break. But the rest of us, we have a lady in Belgium, a lady in Germany, a lady from India who's in London, <laughs> and then two of us from California. Uh, so, uh, and, and, and we're, we're just uh, playing improv, uh, improv is imp- improvising stories we're improvising stories and working on getting that emotional connection in the story as well and so it's not always funny it could be dark it could be uh sad uh dramatic but it could also be funny so yeah (laughs) thank you for asking it's called free fall international if you want to find us on the interwebs i think we're on facebook and instagram it's like free fall underscore international (laughs) yeah we'll check it out for sure that's really a wonderful way to have spent the pandemic making new friends and uh and opening yourself up to have new emotional connections and and do acting um i i did some things but i i had a hard time uh, you know, getting too creative over the last couple of years, I had to shift uh, slightly away from performing myself um, into more writing. Um, that was the way I channeled my creativity. But I love that you have put all of your energy into this troupe and to like making connections with with these other women now did you know them or did you like just randomly meet on like a facebook group and then you were like let's have a zoom meeting and see if we can be friends right right i didn't know any of these ladies i just reached out to this group you know where we had the similar acting training and i said hey i have this idea and if anybody's interested DM me and then we would talk and I would explain my idea that I have no idea what I'm doing. I have no idea what we're creating, but this is the idea and I don't know how it's going to look yet, but if you want to try it, join, join me. And, uh, and that's, so I didn't know anyone, but now it's so lovely because I have to say it's so, so collaborative, right? Um, the whole group is collaborative. Um, yes, I'm still the spearhead per se, but truly it's such a collaborative group and I just love these ladies so much. Uh, it's, and it, 
I'm just grateful to have all of them were so just really supportive and encouraging, but also really accepting, you know, that some days we are not our best selves and that's okay. We still, we bring that to our characters in the improv and that's okay. We allow that, you know? Yeah. So it's really lovely. Yeah. What a great way to make connections and to like make it through like all this wild time, like, I love the new friendships. I too have had, you know, some cool um, connections made online like this. Like it, it's just, there's something really beautiful about it. And I'm trying to like cling to the positivity of it. So, so much. Um, Cause it, it, it is so wonderful that somehow these walls that we had had between countries, between people, came down when absolutely every single one of us humans across the globe had the exact same experience. And I think that that was, we don't ever have that. Never, ever, ever. No one had it. Our parents didn't have it. Like it was not a thing that has ever happened in like hundreds of years of human experience that not only did we all go through something at the exact same time, but we could talk about it with each other. Like, yeah, yeah, it, it has been a mind blowing time for collaborative connection, for making friends and for completely ignoring the fact that we live in different countries and being like, we got, we are like best friends. Like yeah. I used to think, you know, oh, I would only understand theatrical people from my own country because, you know, we study X, Y, Z. I am incorrect. There are so, number one, yes, there are a thousand different styles of art and theater and film and creation in every other country and how awesome that is. But then also that my thing that I'm all like, oh, I'm super unique, not so unique, pretty regular, seems like <laughs> both most theater the same ish um, <laughs> with a few uh, with a few adjustments, even improv. And there's all these big discussions in improv, too, whether it's like, are we doing like you mentioned, dramatic, emotionally driven improv? Mm -hmm. or are we doing like funsies, jokes, jokes, jokes? Um, and we have these big, deep discussions about them all the time. And every time we get really nerdy and I'm like commenting on like a 45 comment thread about like what kind of improv is the best improv. I'm like, we're such nerds. You guys, this is so great. <laughs> I love how nerdy we all are about theater. That's my favorite. I love, I love all the improv. I really do. You know, me too. I just, I do. I love it. I, I love the short form. I love the jokes. I love the long form. I love I, I, I just love all of it. Yeah. I don't know. No, yeah. I mean, it's a, it's an art form that is ever evolving, almost like we've been talking about the whole time, like your uh, career and the work that you've done on yourself as an actress has, is an ever evolving experience. You're constantly making it better and improving. And I feel like improv as an art form is similar. It started with a bunch of random disparate ideas. This person thought of it was this. Pe some people thought of it as this. And now that we're all able to talk to each other, we're able to find a way way to make it all work and it all is good individually it's like hey man each each improv style is an ice cream flavor we don't need to mix yes. them all together i'll take yes. each one individually i don't i'm not going to turn away uh you know any ice cream flavor nor will no. i turn away any style of improv right oh no. i'll take it this yes. one today yes. maybe two scoops of the other one it's fine you never know <laughs> yes, yes. I love that analogy. Improv is like ice cream and the different kinds are different flavors. I will never turn away any ice cream ever. ever. <laughs> no. They could be like, hey, like what did I see the other day? It was all like it was all like, hey, this is mustard flavored. And I was like, give me a scoop. I don't know. Oh my gosh. I don't I'm I don't know what it's gonna taste like, but I wanna try. That's fine, right? I, I did that garlic flavored ice cream. It it wasn't that bad. <laughs> oh, it was certainly a culinary interesting, like, what made you even want to try this? But that it's the same thing with art, right? Yeah. Not every bit of art is exactly what I want to do forever, 
but I'm yeah. definitely going to dip my toe in it. I definitely yeah. am fine with like, yeah, you want to take a, a workshop on this wacky style? Yeah. Yes. Yeah, sure. Maybe I'll never use it again, but that doesn't mean that it wasn't a fun time in the moment. It wasn't. Yeah. I mean, how fun was it when you were holding that garlic ice cream and you were like, guys, I'm going to taste it. It's going to happen. <laughs> Who's got their cameras? Is everyone looking Great. at me? Look at me right, right. now. Uh, it's happening. Oh, like, yes. that's the best, right? That's how I feel about all my improv. I'm all, that's actually what I do. I just go out on stage. And I'm like, guys, I'm about to do a scene. It's amazing. Watch. You guys are going to love it. Oh, my God. You're going to laugh so hard. It's rough. You don't want to do that. Um, this has been really a great conversation. Uh, so fun. Um, I feel like we've talked a lot about, um, well, when we talk about your international improv troupe, I feel like this work that you're doing and the classes that you're taking are definitely, you know, making you a better actor and creating, you know, such a wonderful, you know, like basis for you to jump off and, and do your own art from. For you, I guess my final question for you is, you know, what advice do you have for actors, maybe even in your area? Like, because we, we were talking about how individualistic it is, the the paths, right? So you know about your area in San Francisco. What is the, what's the advice that you would give to somebody? Somebody's moving to San Francisco. Hey, I want to get into acting too. What do I do? Yeah, yeah. Um, well, it's 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 started in San Francisco, but now I'm based in L.A. Oh, so yeah, of course. LA. Yeah, uh, yeah. But um, I think the best I advice I can give really is probably not that great, but I will do my best. <laughs> is 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 okay? This is gonna sound woo woo, but. If you have a dream in your heart, whatever that is, right, as an actor or as an improviser or as an artist or whatever, whatever it is that's calling you, then I would say go for it. Because if you believe in God, and even if you don't, if you believe in the universe or spirit, that put that desire in your heart. It's not in anybody else's, it's yours. So because of that, you're there, you will, you're meant to do it. You will do it. You can do it. Uh, you know, and I would say, believe, take action, inspired action and surround yourself with people who believe and see that for you as well. It's so important to be surrounded by people who can see that and can believe that for you and support and encourage you. So have some mentors um, that 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 can teach you that kind of mindset. And and um, I say this often, but I follow Bob Proctor, uh, Pat Proctor Gallagher Institute, PGI. Uh, they have free YouTube videos. And uh, the mindset, that's all the mindset there. Um, things that stop us from achieving our goals are not necessarily even us. It's just something that that we've been programmed with habits and behaviors that don't serve us, right? And uh, And that's okay. Now we know, and now we can work on exchanging those to stuff that will serve us and, and, um, I truly believe that if if God put it in you, you're meant to put it out there and you will succeed because that's what you were meant to do. Oh, I hope it's helpful. Yes. Oh my God. Man, I you're making me cry. It's like so <laughs> legit. Like, absolutely. I've thought that kind of stuff so many times. Like, why do I have this skill? What's this skill for? I can do this. That's the other thing. I think about this all the time. Not everybody can do this. And I don't mean like, oh, I'm a great actor. I mean, like some people don't want to speak to other people in a room. Like number okay. one, people don't want to. And then, and then there's the, some people don't want to hold a microphone and lead a group. Some people can't confidently speak to 150 people in a room. You have to do it because it's, 
that's what we need you for. Some people have other skills. They're going to use those skills, hopefully. But your skill, if you're an actor, if you're a performer, if you're like, you know, trying to put things up and you're like, okay, what do you want to do it for? That's the other thing too, is like, yes, this is your skill. Do it. What is your effort then, right? Are you doing it so that you will be famous? Are you doing it so that you can tell the stories you want to tell? Are you doing it so that people can see that there are lots of different kinds of people in the world and they all live rich, vibrant lives? And so that's why every actor <clears throat> of every nationality should be in every movie so that we can see the rich, beautiful tapestry of the world. Yeah, all those things are true, right? And whatever our skills are, whatever we have, we can use to serve that, right? Yes. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Oh, man. Woo. Yeah. Oh, I don't think yeah. anyone's ever made me cry. So you're pretty, uh, you're winning. You're winning really? the podcast. Yeah, that was really, oh that really got me. That really got me. Believe that in yourself. So to me. That means so much to me, Amy. <laughs> like, yeah. Here I, I'm such a terrible person. I'm laughing at the fact that you're crying. No, it's all right. We're, <laughs> no, it's, we're it's acting laughter, people. It? No, it's all right. I'm from Boston. Yeah. We make fun of everything. It's yeah. okay. But it's, uh. it's, a, it's, a, it's, a, it's a good laugh. It, I mean, it's, yeah. I mean it, that actually means... Not that I wanted to make you cry, but... Um, it's okay. You should do it. Absolutely, you do. Why not? What's the point of being an actor if you can't make somebody cry? Well, <laughs> yeah, you're right. You're right. Actually, that is my goal, is to be in, 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 in something that makes somebody cry, like, really hard, and then in the same freaking movie or show, make them laugh super hard. I would, uh -huh. I would be like, that is like, yes! But anyways, that isn't about it. Mm -hmm. What I wanted to say to you, Amy, is um, thank you so much because I am so touched that you were touched, you know? And that means actually a lot to me that, that, that there was an impact, and I hope it was a positive impact. And so that means a lot to me. Absolutely. And it's a great message that I'm so glad that the diehards who make it to this point in the episode, hey guys, are um, are getting. They're getting this like message of like hope and purpose and like really appreciating who you are and what you bring to the table and putting it out there. And I think if there's any message that I could want to bring in my podcast, it's that. So thank you. Yes. Thank you. <laughs> Oh, thank you so much for being on the podcast. It's been a, such a wonderful experience. Thank you, Amy. This was wonderful and was not as difficult as I thought it would be. <laughs> well, you say that, but I'm crying, so... Thanks for listening to Yes But Why Podcast. Check out all our episodes on yesbutwhypodcast.com or check out all the content on our network, HC Universal, at hcuniversalnetwork.com. <laughs>